Hello, it's Martin from Wisely Automotive. As you've probably seen from the title of this video, we are about to collect a 99,000 mile BMW i3. But before we do that, I thought I would take you along on the journey because it's coming in as a part exchange. And we often in these videos really push the cars to the limit, but it doesn't really highlight how easy electric car travel has become throughout the UK. So this is the car which is actually replacing the i3 for the customer. It's a Polestar 2. Specifically, it's the long-range variant in the single motor configuration, which is very popular amongst our customers because if you peek inside, we have it charged up to 95% overnight and it's showing 260 miles of range or 240, depending on which metric you look at. If you're new to the world of Polestars and you find this all a bit confusing, just click on the card in the top right-hand corner of the video where we explain all of these little quirks. I will catch up with you just before I get to the customer and I don't want to reveal their address because of privacy reasons. So if I just type in Tesla Supercharger Newport, you see Google finds it without any problems and it's saying I will get there with still 34% in the battery. Nice and easy how it should be. And let's also reset the trip meter so we can track the efficiency. Given this example is fully prepped, I'm not sticking any cameras on the glass. Do not leave any marks whatsoever. I will try to be as tidy as possible. So as I mentioned, I will catch up with you at the supercharger. This is very nice one Polestar just leaving as well. I don't remember what the car estimated I would arrive with, but I still have 39% in the battery, which if we look into the range assistant, that's basically 100 real world miles. But to be fair, I'm ready for a break anyways after over three hours of continuous driving. In case you're gonna ask how did I manage to take so long to cover only about 140 miles, well that's London traffic for you. But at least the overall efficiency seems to have been very good. That should translate to about 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. We can always double check with Google. Calculate 1000 divided by 287. The answer is approximately 3.484321. Nice. And as you can see, I've plugged in now and I'm charging and getting 126 kilowatts at 50%. To be fair, I think that's more than enough. I just needed a quick top up because I'm dropping off the car at the customer's office and obviously he needs to have plenty of charge to get home. So yeah, next time you see me, I will be in an i3. And here it is in the lovely bright protonic blue color. I really like it. It really suits the futuristic character of the i3. But let's jump inside because you will see we have got Harman Kardon sunroof, which opens all functional, no problems. And if we look at the interior upholstery and the trims, you can't really tell it has done that many miles. All of this has aged very well. And the proof is right here. 99 and a half thousand miles on the clock. The eagle-eyed i3 experts may have actually spotted something and that's that this is not a fully electric i3 because you see you've got two flaps on this side of the vehicle. So the rear one is your standard charging flap and it does support CCS rapid charging. So we will test that out on the route to make sure everything is working as expected. And in the front here, you've got the range extender fuel filler flap. And this is important to mention because in the EV community, people actually tend to get quite worried about the little petrol engine, which is called the range extender. And it's truly a range extender. It's not a hybrid with the i3. It's a tiny two cylinder 600cc engine, basically taken from a BMW motorcycle. And it's only powering the generator. It never drives the wheels. It's just there as a backup if you run out of electricity to provide enough power to get you to the next charger. On the other hand of the spectrum, people who have had petrol cars for ages and are confident with them, same goes for other motor traders, they are not that worried about the engine because they think it's easy to fix. It's the battery which they are worried about. So the journey plan is as follows. I will drive to Chievely Services. I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's basically on the M4. So as you can see, according to the SatNav, it's about 100 miles away to the services, which is a perfect opportunity to run the range extender for an extended period of time on the motorway 
to make sure that nothing is wrong. As you can see at the moment, there are no engine management lights nor any errors in the infotainment system on these i3s. They are separate, but so far everything seems good. It already feels like the top mounts may need doing, but that's a topic for another video. We will have a dedicated in-depth video on all the mechanical and cosmetic things to look out for when you're buying an i3. So make sure you subscribe not to miss that one. But that's not what today is about. Today is focused more or less on the drivetrain to see whether buying an electric car, which is 100,000 miles, is a sensible choice because you can get these relatively cheaply now or whether it's just a ticking time bomb. Because what I have in mind is that for the second leg of the journey, I will rely purely on electricity to get me to the office. And we can try to estimate how much capacity is left in the battery, battery degradation, whether the charging still occurs at full speed at Chivli services. There's plenty of chargers there, so it should be no problem. Perfect. So I'm about to join the M4 as I'm doing. So let me remember to go into vehicle information and reset the trip meter so we can track all the stats. I can assure you that even in eco mode there is no lack of power from this i3. I'm already up to basically 70. So no problem with the motor. Obviously with the electric motors you can't really tell that anything is wrong unless it goes really terribly wrong. So mileage is not a concern for us for the actual drive unit with the motor and the gearbox. And as you can see in the instrument cluster we have got about 125 miles of combined range. That should be fairly accurate because that's based on the navigation data on the route we are going on. If I scroll into here, 60% battery, that's showing 49 miles. Not too bad, but we will see how realistic that is. But first of all, let me fire up the range extender. I don't know how this comes across on camera, but if I zoom in closely on the instrument cluster, you can see that there is a little arrow that indicates the default setup for the range extender. In other words, the car's computers let the battery drain to 6.5%, at which point the petrol kicks in and tries to maintain that little buffer in the battery. But you can also manually force it on as long as you are below 75% state of charge, which of course we are. So if I go into vehicle settings and range extender, there's a tick box in the infotainment system. And you can see now the arrow jumps up to the 59% mark, which means the car will try to maintain 59% in the battery. It can never charge the battery. It can only maintain state of charge. And the fuel indicator bars have gone from dark gray to bright gray, almost like a white-ish color. That means that the petrol is now humming away in the background. It's very difficult to notice with all the other wind and road noise at these steady speeds on the motorway, but I'm sure we will feel a little bit of vibration at some point. That's entirely normal. You can also see that the state of charge is dropping ever so slightly. So we have basically lost 1% so far. That's no big deal. That's by design. That range extender, it's a little engine. It can't provide continuous power to maintain 70 miles per hour, which I will try to do once this traffic clears up around me. So the state of charge may keep on dropping. It should just keep dropping very slowly. And on these downhill sections of the M4, or if you get into any construction zones and the power demand is not as high, then we should be able to get some of the charge back close to the target 59%. You see like exactly now we are going downhill. I can't even hear the range extender running now, but because we are regening some power, we are already back up half a percent again. But yeah, I will just keep on driving and report if anything of interest happens in the meantime. I'm about to leave Wales and so far, call me impressed, the little Rex engine is not struggling to maintain state of charge. I'm locked in at 70 miles per hour on the cruise control and I've only dipped a couple of percent below the set target, which is 59% still. As you can see, no warning messages, all is good. I'm about to run out of petrol. I only have about a mile left in the tank. Battery, impressively, still at 59%, even though I've been doing 70 most of the journey. So that's really not bad at all. No abnormal vibration or noise from the Rex engine no warning messages. So as far as I'm concerned, this is all good. Obviously, we will also inspect it on a ramp from underneath before sale, but you have to keep in mind with these i3s, they are so sensitive and there are so many full detection systems that if there was something wrong by now, I'm sure we would have received a notification. And there we go. We dropped from zero miles to dashes. So the range extender is officially off 
and we are back to using only electricity. So I must have done about 50, 60 miles on Rex alone. That's what we would expect on a full tank. And now have about 58 miles of range remaining on the battery and only 24 miles to go to the services. I reached some roadworks now, but I'm very close to the services. So let's look at the data so far. If we go into the trip computer. You will see that the efficiency has been 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour, which is actually quite good for a motorway heavy run, which this definitely was with an average speed of over 64 miles per hour. Who said that if you have an electric car, you have to drive behind lorries at 50 miles per hour? That's absolute nonsense. And here we go. Plenty of nice, super fast 350 kilowatt grid surf chargers. So let's see, let's uh, go for this one at the very end. Time to plug in, contactless payment, and we should start charging now. And the power is ramping up, so this is all normal. We are expecting about probably 45 kilowatts at 38%. The thing is, these i3s are limited by how much current they are designed to take, which is 125 amps. So as the voltage in the battery rises, so will the charging power. The peak should happen at about 50-60% at 50 kilowatts. And then at the top end of the battery, we will drop down again. At least that's the theory, but if I zoom in here, you will see, as expected, we are doing just over 40 kilowatts. In the meantime, I've plugged in an OBD dongle into the diagnostic port so we can look at some of the data behind the scenes. You can see as the state of charge rose to about 53%, now we are pulling a little bit more. There is about 44, 45 kilowatts actually going into the battery. And we can see that the temperatures are looking all good. It's quite mild outside, only 12 degrees Celsius. So I don't even hear the air compressor running to chill down the battery pack. But this is all as we would expect. And also, if you look closely, I have spoiled one little bit, which I wanted to leave until the end of the video, which is the state of health. 88%, but that's not quite the entire story. So make sure to stick around because we will need to discuss this in further detail. We are now nearing 80% where the theoretical 50 kilowatts peak should occur. And you can see we're just a couple of kilowatts under that. So it's fair to say that, yes, it has maybe lost a couple of kilowatts of the peak rate, but it's not different to a combustion engine losing a few horses along the many years and miles of its lifespan. So realistically, this will only add maybe one, two minutes to the total charging time to 80%. Just reached exactly 90%. And if we look at the power, that's the drop I was talking about. We are now ramping down the charging current, which reduces the total charging power. Less than 25 minutes to over 93%. I know we started with quite high state of charge, but these i3s, they don't mind charging all the way to full, even on rapid chargers. Here's the rest of the plan. I'm at exactly 96% according to the instrument cluster, which should translate to about 116 miles of range in eco mode. Now I will drive completely as normal, so 70 miles per hour on the motorway like so far. I will have the air conditioning running to stay comfortable in the cabin and there is absolutely no petrol left, so there is no cheating. I will drive all the way to London. We will see how much battery we use. I will also reset the trip computer while I'm talking about this. So once I get to the office, we can look at the final stats and look at all the queues at these chargers. Terrible, absolutely unusable. Electric mobility, so difficult. Yeah, back on the M4 eastbound, 60 miles to go. I'm about to head through central London, so the average speed will drop dramatically. But so far on this run, I've done 48 miles at 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour with an average speed of 64 miles per hour. So very similar to the previous run, but obviously now purely on electricity and the battery state of charge is 52.5%. And I will put the exact motorway range number in these nice conditions into the banner below my face, but basically, 80 to 90 miles of real world range in these mild conditions that's pretty good because that's what these cars used to do when they were brand new keep in mind this is the middle battery option the 94 amp power and crucially i have been watching the state of charge and it's nice and linear there are no abnormalities because if you had sudden jumps that could indicate that some of the modules in the battery are faulty and that's one of the reasons why i actually wanted to charge all the way to full to make sure that there is 
nothing funky happening, but yeah, all as expected. But it's not all over yet because in the office we can cross-check the numbers. I've arrived in the office and now it's the fun game of deciding which computer we trust the most because the numbers do differ slightly. The traditional trip computer gives us all the info we really need because we know how many miles we have covered, we know our average efficiency and we also know how many percent we used based on the information from the instrument cluster. So it's a very simple math to work out the energy used to cover the distance and then estimate how much energy the battery would hold from a full 100% to 0% charge. According to my math, that works out to 28.2 kilowatt hours, which is actually a very optimistic number, because if we, for example, look into the battery Kappa Max, I know all of you i3 fans, I kept you waiting this long, the Kappa Max figure on this car, as of right now, is 28.0 kilowatt hours. So, which one is more accurate? And if you look at the state of health, that's 88%, which seems quite low, because from factory, BMW guaranteed just over 27 kilowatt hours of usable energy. So this is basically still better than what you were promised when the car was brand new. We know this with German manufacturers, they like to be quite pessimistic and under-promise and over-deliver, not just with electric cars, but also with you know, 0 to 60 times and horsepower figures for their combustion engine models. I will plug it into our Hypervolt, which is a home charger, 7 kilowatts, but as I said, the charging power will be reduced and it comes with its own electricity meter, is Wi-Fi connected, so we will be able to monitor in the app how much energy the car uses to get back to 100% again. We appreciate that if you're not a techie person, you may find all of these numbers confusing and overwhelming. And on the other hand of the spectrum, if you're a massive EV nerd, you probably want to know which one of them is to trust and which one is the most accurate. But you have to look at the situation kind of holistically. This particular i3 has covered just over 99,500 miles, which means there is less than 500 miles of the high voltage battery warranty left. Yet, even despite that fact, it's still basically next to impossible to measure any real-world battery degradation. We have to be honest and say that most of our portfolio is quite a bit younger and lower mileage. So for example, we have a 68-plate i3 with the biggest 120 amp battery or a 72-plate Polestar 2. But to put the record straight, it has absolutely nothing to do with the battery degradation. In fact, those are quite rookie numbers. We have sold quite a few EVs with much higher mileages than that, long out of battery warranty without any worries. The biggest problem with these i3s is that if they accumulate quite a few little niggles and issues, it can be quite expensive to rectify them all and prepare them to our standards. But this, as I said, is quite a nice example, especially considering the overall mileage. So we were more than happy to take it in part exchange and I'm sure someone will get a bargain with our in-house warranty on it. Yeah, and I think that's about it. I know I promised to discuss the numbers about battery degradation in more detail, but I'm afraid you will have to subscribe for that because that will come in a separate video where we show you the real-life battery degradation not of a 100k mile car, but of our pool car, which has covered over 170,000 miles now. Probably one of the highest mileage i3s out there. So click our logo to subscribe to the channel. And also, if you want to learn more about the i3s in general, make sure to check out our i3 playlist. Thank you again for watching. See you in the next one.